So let's do a wrist check real quick. Um, show us what's on the wrist today. This is actually a, a watch that I got from, uh, from you guys right here at Watch You Want. <clears throat> it's an Omega Seamaster Aquaterra annual calendar. It has uh, what they call the yacht deck dial there with the different uh, depths, I guess you'd say, on the dial. Rose gold hour markers and hands. And what I really like about this watch is that uh, it's, it's very professional. I'm, a, I'm a, an attorney, I'm in court a lot, I'm signing documents, and I wanna make sure that the times, not the, just the times right, but the date is right as well. It's this whole 3031 thing that, uh, you know, did I, did, I, did I adjust my watch at the beginning of this month? Is my date right? Was there 30 days or 31 days last month? And it's like, did I lock my, did I lock the uh, car or did I lock the yeah. house? Did I lock the, did I, and I think, but you're wavering and vacillating. And then I pull my phone out and I check the date and I go, wait a second. What am I doing with all these nice watches that I don't really trust? So I ended up getting this uh, annual calendar and, and I couldn't figure out, it, it confused me. All right, because here's the thing with the annual calendar. It, I'm watching, I'm seeing what it does and it appears to know whether there's 30 days or 31 days in a month because it governs itself accordingly. But as we all know, mechanical watches don't know anything. It's a stack of wheels and gears and pins and all, springs. So I'm going, what is it doing on its own that gives the appearance that it knows how many days are in the month? Because it's, it's not regular, you know, like it's not like every other month is third, you know, which no. would make sense. And so. I ended up uh, taking my poor wife to all the, these Omega stores and everything. I ended up at the Miami Art District. There's a two-story Omega building there. And on the top floor, there's a scientist in a lab coat with the monocle and everything. And he explains to me, and, and I may be butchering it. This is as it goes through what he told me in, uh, out of my mouth. But it was basically that there was the, the month wheel, yes. January through December. <clears throat> there was a 1 through 30 wheel. And another wheel that's 1 through 31. And each month has a corresponding mechanism that engages and disengages the appropriate wheel. However, it's getting very close to March 1st, so we all have to watch ourselves on March 1st, whether you have an annual calendar or not. That's, that's why I go with a perpetual. <laughs> so the great thing about the caliber 8601 in that annual calendar is that it's everything the 8500 is, meaning they took everything that was good about the 2500, the first generation coaxial, and then they built a purpose-built coaxial around it. The 2500 was a converted 2892. So you take that 8500 and it becomes the 8601, and now you have twin mainspring barrels, a 60-hour power reserve. You have the silicon hairspring. And if I may, in terms of pure style, I feel like the combination of a steel case or a white gold case with two-tone as a treatment on the dial might be the most aesthetically appealing treatment of two-tone available. Like, I know you can have two-tone Rolexes, bracelet, bezel, case, you can mix metals. But to me, when the gold is on the dial, and the case is steel, or platinum, or palladium, or white gold. That is just scintillating. To me, that feels, to two-tone, what Patek Philippe's diamond between the lugs on a platinum watch is to diamonds on a men's watch. I just love this treatment, and I love that strap that's with it.